EMS just released a new update to their FNC Maps package. One of the biggest features in that release are plus codes. This example will show you how you can not only use plus codes, but how to use plus codes in addition to geocoding and also mixing different services like Google Maps and Apple MapKit. Before I begin, I would like to introduce you to plus codes because you might not have even known or heard about them. They have been hidden pretty well by Google recently in their Maps application. I saw them by a coincidence and suggested to one of our engineers to have a look at them. Maybe that's a useful feature. And the best thing is they're open source, easy to use, and they're accessible offline, meaning you do not need a server connection in order to create a plus code or to convert a plus code into coordinates, but more about that later. And they're also language independent, meaning the string is the same all over the world. So what are plus codes exactly? So if you go to Google Maps and look for the Tower of London in the UK, for example, you not only get the coordinates and the description of the building and the rating and all that sort of stuff. No, you also get the plus code right on the bottom of the screen, marked by this very well-designed plus sign. You can see that GW5F plus 6J will actually point to the Tower of London in London, United Kingdom. And that's the magic of plus codes. You only need to provide this string and not the latitude or longitude or any other complicated information, just that code. The cool thing is that many organizations already use these things for emergency services or just like you see here, the people of Calcutta who do not have addresses, street addresses, can use these codes in order to place their home on the map. Another example is the Rural Utah Project, which helps members of the Navajo Nation to register to vote and to provide emergency services to them because it makes it easier to identify where their house is. And the great thing is that FNC Maps makes it really easy to provide this functionality to your applications. Let me show you the demonstration first, and then you'll see how little code you have to actually write in order to provide your users with this great functionality. The map points to the default location of the FNC Map framework. However, this is a Google Map, meaning we're using the Apple MapKit framework to provide the map information. The get plus code is implemented using Google. You do not need to provide an API key or anything for that. You can use this service without any server connection offline, as already stated. However, the key of this application is here. You can also look for a place and determine its latitude and longitude. So this application does not only provide the functionality that you can click anywhere on the map like this and get the coordinates of that place, click get plus code and calculate the plus code for that location. No, you can also type in a location, for example, the Golden Gate Bridge and then click locate. We will use the Google geocoding service in order to provide the location. That service provides latitude and longitude. And if you click get plus code, we have the plus code for the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's copy that into the clipboard, close the application and restart it. Now we paste the plus code into this field and check if the location is determined correctly. So we click show location and there we are again on the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, United States. So how much did we have to implement for this? First of all, we use the vSale UI pack from TMS to automatically style the form by simply placing a T advanced form styler on the form and clicking the property auto theme adapt. We just enable that property and this makes sure that the form looks like it is supposed to look on the operating system that we start our application on. This is all automatic, no line of code. Then the two fields, latitude and longitude, use advanced edit with the float editor with a certain precision. Here I used six decimal digits after the period. And then of course we need the action, which is a glow button to request the plus code and another edit field that will take the plus code. This is really trivial. We have another edit for the location and a button to trigger the geocoding. 
Now to the parts that are part of the FNC Maps framework. First of all, the geocoding component, which will determine the latitude and longitude for the location that you enter in this text field. Make sure that you set the service to Google if you want to use Google. And of course, you have to set the API key to a Google API key. The same for the map. Let's focus on getting the plus key first. So we have these two edits, as already said, I named them txt latitude and txt longitude. The button is get plus code. Double clicking the button for the implementation shows that it's pretty brief. First of all, I check if the longitude and latitude are not zero, and then I immediately calculate the plus code using the TTMS FNC maps plus code class with its encode method. The encode method, as you can see with code completion, expects a TTMS FNC maps coordinate record, which you can create easily using the create coordinate function, which is also part of the FNC maps framework. You pass both the latitude and the longitude. If you get confused which one to provide first, just invoke code completion. As you can see, latitude goes first and then the longitude. That's already it. That is all you need to do in order to calculate a plus code with FNC maps. One line, not more. The reversal is just as easy. Let's go back to the form, double click on show location. Here we just check if the plus code has been entered and then we get as a return value of the decode function, a TTMS FNC bounce record. Because formally, Google defined a plus code not only as one coordinate, but also as an area. So if we just have a coordinate, as in this case, we simply use the northeast coordinate of the bounce. A bounce is always a rectangle in the TMS FNC maps world. Just be careful, the data structure calls it northeast because it's either in the north or in the east as the extremity coordinate. That is something that is Google specific and has been transferred into the FNC maps framework. Again, you don't need to get confused because code completion helps you what the properties are called. So in order to convert the plus code to the coordinate, we simply call the TTMS FNC maps plus code class again with a decode method, pass the plus code, and then we can set the coordinate using a method that I wrote for this example, setting the latitude and longitude. There is no magic behind set coordinate. It simply sets the edit field and centers the map on that coordinate. Mind that we can use these two values directly, the double values. We do not have to use a coordinate. Overloads are available as you can see right here. You could also create a coordinate record if you wanted to. Finally, the big one, which gives the most comfort that you can provide an address and then get the latitude and longitude for that address. Again, we use the geocoder and in order to use the geocoder, you simply call the get geocoding method of that control and pass the address or the location that you want to geocode as its first parameter. This is an asynchronous action because the Google web service is being triggered and you do not know when the reply is going to reach you. So execution of your program goes on right away and an event is triggered as soon as the action is completed. Completed does not mean it has been successful. Just always remember that. So going to the events of this control, you can go to on get geocoding double click for the implementation and then we first check if the request result is successful and even if the request is successful that is something i always forgot at first it doesn't mean that the request actually returned a valid coordinate so you always have to check for items.count as well and if the number of returned items is bigger than zero you can actually get the first coordinate using items zero dot coordinate and again we want the record not the class so we can use dot to rec and use set coordinate again in order to place the map where the location was found set coordinate as said before also sets the edit fields inside of the user interface so if you click on get plus code after that you will get the plus code for the location that the geocoder has determined that's really how easy it is 
to use FNC maps with plus codes and geocoder. Another tidbit I would like to present to you is how to provide the API keys for your applications. Obviously, you have to request the API keys from the map providers or geocoding providers that you want to use. The documentation tells you how to acquire those keys. However, how do you deploy these keys into your application? User resources are the easiest way to do this with strings. And that's exactly what I do in this example. I created a key.rc for the resource compiler and I defined two strings in there, one ID key Apple and the other one ID key Google. The most important point is make sure that your end users cannot determine the key using a resource hacker or something like that. So make sure that you encrypt your keys. This example, because I didn't want any dependency on the TMS cryptography pack, for example, just uses base64 encoding and decoding. So going to the source code, you see that it decodes these base64 encoded strings. Going back to the main form and looking at how the keys are being set, we do that in the form create event. You see that L Google and L Apple are both strings that carry the strings. And we use the load string method from the sysutils unit that is bundled with Delphi and pass the IDs of the strings. That's a little bit cumbersome because you have to redefine them in your source code. And these numbers, of course, have to match the numbers that you defined in your resource. Looking at the for create event again, you see that we decode the 64 encoding using a helper class from TTMS FNC utils decode 64. That's the fastest way how to undo base 64 encoding. The false here means that it's not a URL because TMS also or offers the specific encoding for URLs. And you can see we assign the Google key to the geocoder and we assign the Apple map key to the map component. Then we set the service of the map to Apple after, that's the key here, we assign it after we set the API key. Don't do it the other way around. And then we set the zoom level to 12 to make sure this is hard coded, I know, but this way you can see site, sites like the Golden Gate Bridge easily. Finally, how do you get the base64 encoding for these strings? Of course, you can use simply an uh, internet application, but also in Delphi, just to show you how easy it is, you can simply write yourself a quick encode helper, really quick, one edit for the original string, the other edit with the encoded string and the button. What does it do? Well, just as you might have imagined, we use the TTMS FNC utils again, encode 64, provide the string to be encoded, and then false because it's not a URL, that's it. That's how you get your base64 encoded strings that you can put in the resource. Of course, this is only a demonstration. Please, please, please look at the TMS cryptography pack to really, really encrypt your API keys to make sure that other users do not abuse your map keys for their own applications. We're at the end of this example. I hope you see how useful plus codes are and how easy you can combine different mapping services with FNC maps for different use cases like geocoding, displaying a map, and calculating plus codes. Thanks for watching.